Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Jack of All Trades. I got an interesting episode for you today. So as I alluded in my previous video, we were going to do a conversion in, a, in the Buick for a canned air duster air conditioning. So if you don't know that already, canned air duster is a R152A. It is a refrigerant. It's not regulated by the EPA and it is not harmful to the atmosphere like the rest of the refrigerants are that we use right now. So anyway, uh, I, I seen on several blogs and posts that uh, there are people converting their cars that were built in the 80s that were made with the R22. They're converting them over to the R152A and uh, getting good results. And there are some people that have posted on blogs and threads about uh, converting their R12 systems over. However, I wasn't able to find any videos out there. So I went ahead and made one for you guys so that you could see exactly what I did, the results that I had, and if it got cold you have to you have to stay tuned to actually see if it did now some uh some real quick warnings i, I want to give you so uh with doing the reading I, I did find out some stuff that uh that you need to know first off canned air duster is mildly flammable okay uh, r12 is not flammable at all and uh 134a which is uh, currently being used in a lot of cars is not as flammable so um the best I could do is I couldn't get it to light myself. I tried to light it with a torch. I just kept blowing it out. I did some, see some people online that were able to get it to, to light under certain circumstances. It burns really slow, kind of like oil. Uh, it's not real fast like propane or gasoline. But uh, even though this could potentially be the future of re uh, refrigerant for cars, those systems are going to have safeguards built in place where ours don't. So please, please keep in mind, even though this is an experiment and a lot of people are doing it, there is some risk involved. So uh, keep that in mind as you're watching what I, I'm doing here. And hopefully if uh, this works out, uh, we could have some pretty cheap canned air, air conditioning for these older cars. All right, enjoy. All right, so here's all the parts and equipment. I just wanna go through it real quick so that you have an idea of what we're looking at. Uh, I have my uh, handy dandy replacement uh, compressor here. This is a spare one that I have. I have a, uh, a can tap that will be used to get the, the, the compressed gases out of the uh, air duster. I have my fittings for R12 to R134A. I have a pump, a vacuum pump, and a flush kit that I rented from O'Reilly's. You can rent these at usually at most auto parts stores like Advanced Auto Parts and AutoZone. Uh, with the flush kit, you have to buy the flush uh, solvent. And with the pump, you have to purchase a can of pump oil uh, to put in there. So keep that in mind. I have a dryer, a filter dryer. You're gonna need one of those. Uh, this is probably gonna be one of the bare minimum things you replace because uh, th these do go bad over time. And uh, I got an expansion valve. Since my air compressor uh, locked up on my old car, uh, I went ahead and got one of these in case there's some debris in there that's blocking it. I got O-rings and dye in case there's leaks down the road. I remember I mentioned in the other video that I'm gonna try to see how little I can put in this to get it to work. I will put dye in it to see if there's any leaks and if there are leaks, I can replace some of the O-rings. Uh, I got the air duster from Walmart. You can get a four pack of this for about 13 bucks. So it's pretty cheap. Cars probably only gonna take two, maybe a little more. Uh, my car also needs a belt. You probably won't need that. And some assorted tools, some line wrenches. You're gonna need compressed air so you can uh, blow out air through the system. Uh, to make sure you're clearing things out and drying out the uh, solvent. Uh, don't worry about moisture though, because once you pull a vacuum on it, it's gonna bake off all that, that moisture anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so one more thing, I do have to make sure I get some uh, ester oil. Uh, you don't wanna use PAG or uh, mineral oil for this. You definitely don't wanna use mineral oil. I'm pretty sure PAG isn't gonna be the best option, so ester is, is gonna be what I'm picking in this case. All right, over here to the car, we're gonna start doing some of the disassembly. Uh, we've got the front of the car here in the garage, and so uh, my dryer's right here. Uh, it's right next to the condenser, so that's going to get removed. And then we got the old compressor that's locked up. Um, it's actually the um, the belt side of it that's locked up, and you know the compressor itself could probably be good still because it looks like the clutch moves, but um, the pulley itself doesn't move at all. So that's something we have to look at. There's no, uh, there's no Freon in the system though at all. There is a leak somewhere and uh, the front of these seals do leak a little bit. 
um, they're actually self-lubricating so there could be a chance that it's all leaked out already because of that uh, anyway so I take this compressor out and then um, my expansion tubes right there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and replace that and then once we have those parts out we're gonna flush uh, everything in place as best as we can uh, I don't want to do too many part removals so we'll remove the compressor the upper brackets are already off of this anyway but we'll go ahead and get all those parts off and uh, see where we're at from there all right so the filter dryer comes off it's just two clamps and uh, two fittings at the top uh, one of them is a 5.8 and the other is 11.16 so they're two different sizes so you can't really get them mixed up um, looking at the size difference you can see that it is a little wider so hopefully that doesn't cause any interference uh, it does come with two green o-rings and those o-rings go right here at the end of these fittings so pretty simple all right here we have another day so the next day uh, i stayed up kind of late last night taking the, the everything apart took the compressor off took several of the hoses apart uh, to do that and i noticed several of the o-rings were in bad shape so I just kept going, uh, ended up taking the POA valve off and the, uh, I took the POA valve off in order to get the expansion valve completely off. And if you're doing this for the first time, you don't know it, the expansion valve has a little, uh, tube, an orifice tube type thing that comes up here and it, it gets behind this, um, insulated tar stuff. And if you don't know it, it's actually screwed onto there. So you have to take that off or you're going to, you'll break it. So uh, that's what I ended up doing was I, I broke the line on it. I'm replacing it anyway, so it's fine. So, but I do have to take that insulation tar off here now and unscrew the old one so I can put the new one on. The POA valve I took off, it had a really bad, the, the O-ring on it was in really bad shape. So at that point, I, I already have the O-ring kit. I went ahead and decided that I'm just gonna replace all the O-rings. Uh, just know that when you do replace the O-rings, you need to cover them in a little bit of oil. Uh, your ester oil, your pag oil, whatever you're using, and uh, make sure you lubricate them well before you put them on. Uh, those cheap $5 O-ring kits at Advanced Auto Parts and Auto Zones uh, will do the trick. That's all you need. They're green. So anyway, I'm going to be putting it back together here soon. I'm going to flush the entire system first, at least everything that I can get to under the hood. If there's any connections uh, inside the air box there, I'm not going to be touching them. I don't think there is. But if there is, I'm not going to mess with them. Uh, I'm going to have to, if, if there's a leak and that's where it ends up being, then I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. All right, so let's go ahead and start the flushing. All right, I got the flush system all set up. I've got the, uh, the solvent actually in there already. Uh, so the directions for this is, is that you're going to blow air, just compressed air, through all of your lines, your condenser, and your evaporator. Okay, you're not going to do any of your major components. You're not going to you're not going to do the solvent or the compressed air through your compressor, um, POA valve. Okay, so this is just going to go through your lines and through your condenser and your evaporator. You're going to blow air through both ends of all of those, and then you're going to run the solvent through both ends of all of those as well. Then you're going to go back through it again and do compressed air so you can dry it out. Okay, that's all it is to it. All right, so here's one end that goes onto the dryer, and the other end is right there. So here's what it looks like. It blows out some mist. All right, so every pipe and everything has been flushed out now. The condenser, the evaporator, all the lines running to it. Uh, the little holding tank thing here, it's at, that it's at the bottom. Uh, just be prepared that it's gonna be really messy. Uh, and everything's gonna look brand new when you're done because everything's been soaked and you've had to wipe everything down The only good thing is is this stuff is supposed to not leave any kind of residue and it's supposed to be quick drying So we'll see if, if that is actually true But anyway now we're gonna put all the old rings back on we're gonna lubricate them and put the system back together and go from there All right, so I'm gonna put the uh, most of the oil is gonna go into the compressor here um, I put uh, about an ounce in the filter dryer and so that means if my whole system has ten and a half ounces that means that I got nine and a half ounces to go uh, to put into the compressor and then once I get it back on the car I'm gonna work it uh, hand pump it for a while to get it uh, spread out some more spread that oil through the system but I have two of these eight, eight ounce containers I'm gonna put one whole one in here 
and then uh, however you choose to measure but uh, this is how I'm gonna measure I got one of these little cups for medicine and uh, 30 milliliters is an ounce so this is 20 milliliters so I just gonna do the conversion for that and uh, that's how I'm gonna get the rest of it in there so I'm gonna do this first and I'm gonna pour it in in this in there a little bit at a time and I'm gonna I'm gonna work it in a circle so it gets into the system there and then I'm gonna pour a little more and I'm just gonna to continue to do it this way you don't want to pour too much all at once because it might shoot out into your face and that's it for now okay vacuum gauges are set up here and the pump is going and I did not put everything back together I didn't want to have to take more brackets off if I needed to fix something so I just have the basic system in place right now with all the tubes connected and all the peripherals to that so we'll run a vacuum now for 45 minutes and then shut everything off and let it set for at least an hour and let's see if it holds a vacuum all right everything's back together we're just going to give it a start here of getting the can tapped okay so the compressor's back on put together uh all the electronics were tested a vacuum was drawn there's a, currently a vacuum in the system right now. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tap this can. I'm going to tap it as low as I possibly can. Try to get all the liquid in there. And I'm going to, I'm going to let the negative pressure inside the system draw in as much as it possibly can before I start the car. Now once I start the car, uh, you won't be able to hear what's going on in here. And I'll, I'm still going to do uh, everything I need to do to get things going. So I might do a voiceover to explain things after that point. So what the plan is, is to go ahead and put as much in as I can right now from the negative pressure and then start the car up and let the, the, let the air compressor do the rest of the work. I gotta put three, three cans in. So uh, ideally what you wanna do is tap the can, uh, relieve some of the pressure in the gauge set, which would just be uh, to open this just a little bit to purge the air and then close it and then uh, let the rest of it go in by opening up the low side. All right, here we go. And you just want to shake this a little bit and hold it at an angle so that all the coolant refrigerant is, is towards the valve. All right, I'm doing it like this first so we can get some fluid in the system without the compressor moving over too much. I tried to hand cycle a good amount of it. Okay, this can's empty. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the next several cans. We'll tap it, we'll purge any air that's in the system, and uh, we'll move on. So, so I'll start the car next uh, after the next can is tapped. Can's beveled at the bottom, so I'm trying to get it 
just before it bevels, which I think I, uh, I did on this one. Okay. Okay, purge the air. All right, this can's mostly empty. Okay, we're gonna start the car up on this one now, and then I'll purge, I'll get the next, the third can going. That can't have quite a bit left in it. Definitely a good reason to have safety glasses on. All right, so we're gonna start the car up now. Now the vent earlier, and it was at 90 degrees because the garage is 90 degrees. <coughs> All right, my fusible link was uh, bad there. I had a, a spare one, but I thought uh, I thought it. It ohmed out correctly. It was getting um, continuity between the, the pins. Uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't work now. So I just went ahead and jumped it with some alligators. Um, got my wires all out of the way here. All right, so this should work now. We're gonna start the car up and kick the AC on. If you can see it, but there's some uh, condensation forming on the POA valve over there. So this was 90 earlier. Still way up there, not cooling yet. Doesn't feel cold. We're on max. Let's mess around with it a little bit. All right, I'm back after uh, a bit of a delay and uh, I've been working on some issues with the car, uh, but we do have air conditioning uh, in the Buick now. So, but it's not uh, entirely problematic free. Uh, so I'm still trying to work out the kinks. So there's been about a week between the last time I filmed and now. And what happened was is my POA valve was jammed so i ended up having to set it in some ac flush solvent for about a day and i got some gunk out of it and it started it freed up and then i tested it <clears throat> and set it at 30 psi uh, of, of of airflow uh just kind of like r12 is set at normally uh around that area so the plva valve was stuck and what was caused it was only allowing 10 psi to move through it 
and what was what that was doing was it was pretty much taking the place of the expansion valve at that point because the the biggest restriction in the system was the PAOA valve instead of the expansion valve. We need the expansion valve to be the greater resistance because that's before the evaporator and the flow. So anyway, um, I got the POA valve fixed. I vacuumed the system back down and then I put three full cans of duster in the system. Uh, it was only gonna take about almost two cans, but then I coaxed it along by uh, pouring hot water over the cans and that immediately pushed all of the all of the fluid into the car. So uh, right now, I think it might be have too much pressure in it uh, because the belt wants to slip. I might have to let some pressure out, but I wanted to show you real quick uh, that earlier this week when I was running it, we were getting 95 out of the center vent. And let's see what we're getting now. So it definitely has that air conditioned feel. And you can hear the belt slipping in the background. All right, so 56 degrees right now. I'll cut the AC off. Okay, so there's probably too much pressure in it. That might, the 56 is really good because it was blowing out 95 before, but I know it can do better. And I think overpressurization of the system can also keep the, the coolant from getting as cold as it needs to get. So I'll probably play around with it, let a little bit out and see where it gets me. And I'll come back and give you an update after that. All right, so um, yesterday I tested the car out. I drove it around uh, with where we're at so far in the troubleshooting process. Uh, I know the POA valve works now, the expansion tube is working and we're getting some cooling in the car. I got it down to 47 degrees on high with uh, it circulating the, in, in the air inside the car. Now, if this was just gonna be for me, uh, I would stop right here. Uh, further testing could make it worse, it could make it better. 47 degrees is pretty good. Uh, I, was, I had no air conditioner at all, but uh, I know, or at least I feel like it could be better. And a lot of the claims with uh, the 152 refrigerant is that it does as, better, as good as R12 and better as 134A. So I took some test readings in my uh, one of my newer cars and we were getting low 40s in there. It's storming here right now. We were getting low 40s in that car. Uh, it runs off 134A. So it, I'm performing close to 134A right now. And honestly, going from no air conditioner to air conditioner, I would be fine with it. But this is gonna be for all of you who are watching this video to see if you can do this to your car. If you're doing this to a late 60s, early 70s GMA model, A body, or one of the Fords that has the POA valve, uh, we're gonna have to probably adjust the POA valve now to, to get some better readings inside the car. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start the car up I'm going to uh, let it warm up, get everything cycled through, run the AC for a while, and then I'm going to show you my pressures that I'm at right now so that you can get an idea if you want to duplicate this where you need to be. Uh, I think my initial plan of throwing in three cans, which was 30 ounces of dust off, was probably not a good idea. Uh, we had the compressor was, was struggling there for a little bit to pump everything. It was probably getting some liquid and it was trying to pump the liquid refrigerant, which is not good for it. Um, I think if I was to do this over again, which I likely will, if I gotta redo the POA valve, which I think I do, I'm gonna have to dump all the refrigerant as it is. And what I think I would do is I would put one can in and see if one can is cooling and check the temperature. And if the temperature is not yet in the 40s or 30s, then I would tap another can and add a little bit and see where we're at and see if we could get to that pinnacle of cooling, which would be in the 30s. So, uh, so we're gonna hook everything up, we're gonna see where we're at now, and then once we check our numbers, I'm actually going to dump this coolant and I'm gonna adjust the POA valve down. And once we get the readings on, I'll show you some more information about that. 
All right, so we got everything set up. Uh, I want to just go ahead and give you a quick rundown. Car's at idle right now in the garage. It's only 80 degrees in here. Getting temps of 47. Now, I had let a lot of pressure out of the system uh, whenever it was um, giving me some compressor noise. I did not want to mess the compressor up. So as soon as I started making noise, uh, I turned it off. I would dump some pressure and try it again. So right now, uh, we're at 30 PSI on the low side, okay? And what that is, is that's a direct reflection of what the POA valve is set at. You can adjust that down. For example, if you were to convert a system to 134A, I believe the recommendation is gonna be closer to 20 PSI. Okay, and here's my high side. Uh, I had this all the way up to uh, about 250 at one point. That was way too much. So now you can see we're closer to 175. Okay, so the way you need to adjust your POA valve, POA valve in order to get it to um, run lower pressure is what you want to do is uh, just take the back end hose off that comes to the compressor, take it off and hook your low side manifold gauge up and go ahead and take off the, the connection between the expansion tube or expansion valve and um, the bottom of the evaporator, the inlet for the evaporator, take that off. So then what you wanna do is you wanna run some low compression air through there. I do about 60 PSI. Just hook it up with an air gun like this with a rubber tip on it and blow it through your inlet to your evaporator and then measure the PSI that comes through on your low side gauge. And uh, if you're already at 30 PSI like I was, then uh, you would think that you would need to tighten up this adjuster in here, but actually you need to loosen it. Uh, you can use a 730 seconds, or I found that a five and a half millimeter also works. And you just wanna put it in there and you wanna loosen it. Uh, take your time, it doesn't take much. So loosen it a little bit, blow some air through there, see where you're at, uh, go back and forth. Uh, I actually decided to settle on 23 PSI for the POA. I did a little bit more reading and I found an article uh, on some AC techs uh, who were discussing how 152A could become the replacement for 134A and they found a pressure temperature chart uh, that, that gave them the idea that 23 PSI would be optimal. So I'm gonna run with that. Uh, what I gotta do now is I gotta put this back together, evac the system down, let it hold and uh, today's a pretty cool day, so I don't think this is gonna be the best day to test it, but I'm gonna charge it back up with two cans, two whole cans, and I'm gonna see how the pressures look. If I can get the high side back down to around 175, 180, that would be ideal, I believe, and we can see uh, on another day when it's hotter what the actual uh, temperature inside the cabin is. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so just running some last tests here before I'm finalizing everything. Uh, I've had the car outside running for about 52 minutes. It's 84 degrees outside. I do have most of the car parked in the sun, all the windows down. Uh, AC is on with uh, the outside air and the fan is on high. And I'm getting 57 right now out of the center vent. And we will go ahead and uh, take a cruise now with air, all the windows up and uh, recirculator turned on and see how much colder it gets. All right, so one last piece of information before we go. I'm sure you're curious about the pressures. All right, so I tried to set the POA valve to 23 PSI. Looks like it's settled on 25. So low side right now is setting on 25. High side is setting at 195. And those are the pressures we have for the uh, R152A canned air duster air conditioning. All right, so I've been driving around for about 10 minutes now, uh, going 40 miles an hour, about 1500 RPMs. And it looks like uh, we're sitting right at 37 degrees. Actually 37 and a half. So anyway, uh, this is great. I'm not gonna do anything else to the system. Uh, we'll see how, how it handles longevity wise. 
Uh, I probably could put a little more coolant in. We'll check the pressures and it might go down a little bit more, but I don't really know what I have to gain out of another five degrees. Uh, then I start risking freezing the evap up. So anyway, uh, I'll probably do some videos on this, uh, maybe the hotter, hotter days in the summer and see how that turns out since it's only 84 right now. And uh, we'll get some of those upper 90 de degree days and see how it handles that. And then I'll do a, a test now, probably maybe the end of the year and again next summer to see if I've added any coolant in it. So, all right, so, uh, so stay tuned if you're interested and we'll see how this goes. All right, I hope you liked that video. As you can see, it was a big success. Uh, who knows how long it'll last. I'm gonna do some updated videos here in the, the coming months, uh, the hottest days of the year, the end of the summer, and then I'll do an update next year as well to see how it lasted through the winter. So anyway, uh, if you wanna get those updates, hit the uh, subscribe button there, hit the little bell token so you can get notified whenever I post videos. And if you like this kind of stuff, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe, all right? Take care, bye-bye.